Hey, what's up y'all? It's Dr. Paul here with another installment of our conservation of this cover of Detective Comics number 59, the second appearance of the Penguin. <clears throat> As you can see, it's been in the cold press since we did our mending. It's nice and flat and I'm quite pleased with the results. I think this cover, um, minus the trimming of our Tengujo paper is done. So we dry cleaned it, we removed the staples, we removed all the tape, we removed all this color touch, we faded the color a little bit, but we knew when we bought it, it was a color touched book and um, there were gonna be costs to removing the color touch. One thing that I did, this piece was stuck to the tape and I did bleach it. It's not bleached quite as white as the rest of the paper, obviously. I could go back in and attempt to do something about that, but it's only noticeable on the inside. Once it's folded around the paper, it's not gonna be around the, the inner leaves. It's not gonna be very noticeable. It's slightly darker here from the outside, but again, I don't think it's gonna detract. So I'm gonna leave it. Um, because this is a book for my PC and it doesn't bother me that that's not as bleached as the rest of the paper. So what I'm gonna do today is just trim this excess Tengujo off the edges of the book and then we'll be ready to put this cover back on the uh, inner leaves. So in order to do that, I'm going to adjust my light source and my magnification. All right, I think I have my light source set up so that I can see quite well through my magnifying glass. I'm just gonna use a regular straight ruler and I have a scalpel. This is a number three scalpel with a number 11 blade. And I'm not professing that that's the absolute best tool for this task. It's just a tool that I am comfortable and familiar with. So it's the tool that I'm using. Notice I'm cutting straight here. So there's a choice. I could attempt to trim this Tengujo in here, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to cut a straight edge. And I'm going to keep working in the same space, I'm just gonna move the paper around. All right, now that our Tengujo paper is trimmed, I think the cover looks great. Those repairs are practically invisible. We have a tiny bit of evidence, you know, where there were actual holes and where I didn't cut it top and bottom. But again, we're not trying to hide the fact that we used a mending technique. This is a conservation technique that is accepted as a uh, museum quality and therefore gets a conserved label rather than a restored label from CGC. Full disclosure is always the best practice. So we will of course disclose this if I ever decided to sell this, but this is in my, in my personal collection. I'm happy with it the way it is. If you look here, you can see how there is a very, very slight haziness where the Tengujo paper has been pasted in. This black, for example, is slightly lighter than this black, right? But it's almost invisible. So 
I think it's a wonderful repair. I'm happy with it. We, as you rec may recall, we had staples, which I am almost certain are not original to the book. In fact, I think they were poorly manufactured after the fact staples. I saved them because I thought, well, maybe there's an off chance that they are original to the book. But the more I look at them, I'm convinced they aren't. So I'm going to compare these. I do have a few other pre-war Golden Age books in my collection. I'm going to compare these to a few of the other pre-war Golden Age books that I have. And I'll make a determination whether or not I want to make my own staples or reuse those. I don't think those are representative of what the staples really should have looked like. So I think I'm going to be making my own that are more representative. Notice the arms here are just different lengths on both of them in this case, wildly so. Um, this was the correct material to use. I just don't think they were bent or cut all that well. One of the things that I look for is in a, in a modern book, these staples bend over and almost touch each other in the middle. And this looks like it's close to the correct size for that. But that's in a modern thin book that only has 22 pages of story, right? Which is only one fourth that in terms of the total number of leaves, right? That they're puncturing. On a book like this that was 64 pages, the it's actually a thick chunk of paper that the that the staple has to penetrate. So in order for these arms to come down and nearly touch each other in the middle, they actually have to be quite a bit longer. So I, I think, again, that these are not representative of correct staples for the era. So I'm going to investigate that and make a decision and, and likely will be making uh, my own staples for this book, and then we'll be putting it back together with the inner leaves. So stay tuned for that. All right, I thought I'd share some of my findings regarding staples for these pre-war DCs um, with you so you can understand some of the decision-making that goes into uh, making your own staples. So here's a copy of All-Star Comics number six. This is August, September 41. Our book in question is January 41. So this is within the same year of manufacture a DC book. First, I want you to note again, like I mentioned, how thick these books are, right? This is not like a modern book. This is a really, the, you need to account for the thickness of the paper in these staples. Second, when you investigate these staples, see how they're meeting in the middle almost perfectly. I mean, it's actually really beautiful how the length matches and they're meeting almost exactly in the center and almost perfectly. Both of them are like that. This one actually appears to maybe overlap a tiny bit, but they should be long enough that they penetrate the paper come together in the center and either overlap by a 32nd of an inch or have a gap of about a 32nd of an inch, okay? We can mic these staples with our micrometer and we can confirm the thickness of the metal. Now, I believe that the correct material was used on that other staple. I don't think there was a question of material being incorrect and we get 22 thousandths which is what I have told you on the channel before is what I expect between 20 and 22 thousandths have been all the staples I've ever measured from any era actually okay so this is one example I know it's an embarrassment of riches that we have all right what's up y'all I'm back we've got our 24 gauge galvanized steel wire about 21 and a half thousandths thick. So again, within anybody's ability to measure that, that is going to appear as uh, original, minus any appropriate patina that, that could have or should have occurred over the time. So the center of the staple is a half inch. The arms I've calculated to be able to go through the thickness of the Golden Age paper, 
and then bend over and almost touch need to be about 350 thousandths of an inch each. So 350, 500, 350, that's about 700 plus 500, that's about 1.2 inches, okay? So I'm gonna cut this wire at approximately 1.2 inches. I'm gonna cut it a little bit long because we can always snip a little bit off the edge of one of the arms if we need to. But once we formed it, obviously adding the material back on is pretty much impossible, right? So I'm gonna just walk you through the process of how I do the manufacturing of a new staple. And I'm gonna just go to one and a quarter inches because, again, I'd rather it be slightly long. I'm gonna cut this right here. And now I have the base material to make my staple. I have several tools that I could wrap this around that are half of an inch. We want the inside to be half of an inch, but we also want the radius to be just right. So here's that little piece of bamboo that I filed to give me the correct radii, both sides. I usually eyeball this in terms of the arms. Again, I'm gonna trim them if I need to when, we're, when all is said and done. Looks about right to me. I'm just gonna hold it in place while I bend the arms down. And that's gonna give me pretty close to a correct radius. That one's almost 90 already. Put that one at a 90. I'm gonna go ahead and try one staple rather than make two just like that and then find out that I need to adjust it. So next step is I'm gonna attempt to put this back in the book and see how well it fits and we'll go from there.